Today's lesson is called Turning Someone Down. Hello, everyone. My name is Jeff. My name is Roger, and today we've got a couple of conversations that are all about turning someone down, saying no, refusing someone, rejecting someone, exactly,、uh, telling them that you don't want to do what they want you to do, or maybe you're going to turn down a gift that they want to give you. There are various reasons why you would want to turn someone down, and we've got some example conversations in our lesson today. There you go. Maybe someone asks you out on a date, but you're not interested in them in that way. You might have to turn them down. And sure, this is easy, right? Wrong. Sometimes handling these types of situations is quite challenging. And romance—that's a tough one. Turning someone down who's interested in you, but you're not interested in them. That's super tough. So for now, we'll stay away from that, and we'll keep things official. Okay, on today's episode here of Plus Talk Dialogue Lesson, we are going to be talking about business. Okay, we are going to be one denying a customer's request, and then we're going to be turning down a coworker's request. So there we go. We are going to be in the workplace, in the office, and we'll be going through some English to teach you guys. How to turn someone down in a polite and civil way? All right, everyone. With that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. We'll be right back after this. Turning someone down. One, denying a customer's request. Sandy, who works for an e-commerce company, is on the phone with a client. There is a problem with the bathing suit I ordered from you online, so I'd like a refund. Thank you for bringing this to our attention. May I ask what the problem is? I ordered a size M, but when I tried it on, it was too tight. I understand how disappointed you must feel, but swimwear isn't refundable once it's been worn. But I didn't wear it. I merely tried it on. I'm sorry, ma'am, but that's our refund policy. So what am I supposed to do with this bathing suit? As much as I'd like to be of assistance, there's not much I can do. Hello, everyone. The first part, we see the word "refund," meaning a refund, 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 a 做动词时要念作 refund。例如 ，The shop owner promised to refund the money if I'm not satisfied with their service. 店家承诺，如果我不满意他们的服务，他们愿意退款。再补充一个相关单词，在这个字的字尾加上 a b l e， 就成了形容词 refundable， 指可退款的。举例来说 ，Don't worry, our train tickets are refundable. 别担心，我们的火车票是可以退款的。接着我们看了一个单词 merely。这个字是副词，意思是只不过，仅仅。例如 ，I thought there was a stranger in my house, but it was merely my cat. 我以为家里有陌生人，但只不过是我的猫。或是 ，When I told my mom I was going out, she merely waved me off. 当我跟我妈妈说我要出门了，她仅仅挥了挥手。另外，这个字去掉字尾 ly， 就成了形容词 mere， 只仅仅的，只不过。举例来说。The meal was ready in mere minutes. 餐点在短短几分钟内就准备好了。或是 The soup had a mere taste of lemon and garlic in it. 这碗汤只有柠檬和蒜头的味道。再来，我们看到名词 assistance， 指协助、帮助。对话中 be of assistance 相当于 helpful。例如 ，I'd like to be of further assistance if you have any questions. 若是您有任何问题，我很乐意进一步协助您。或是 the old woman looked like she needed assistance crossing the street. 那位年长的妇人看起来很需要人协助她过马路。All right, again, the subject for today is turning someone down, and the first conversation is entitled "Denying a Customer's Request." 
Now, of course, a request is、uh, something that someone asks of someone else. If you want them to do something for you or to give you something, then you make a request. So, in this particular case, we got a customer calling customer service, I believe, and they are making a request. But in this particular case, the customer's request is denied. It is turned down. They say no. So they're making a request. Can you do this for me? Can you do something for me? And you have to find a way to say no. No, I can't. We will not be doing that for you. That's what's going on here. When you deny someone of something, you can't have that. No way, no siree. But you can't really say, "Hey, no siree. You're not going to get that from me." You've got to be more civil than that, especially when it comes to business and relationships with customers and stuff like that. So let's find out how to deny a customer's request. Okay, Sandy, who works for an e-commerce company, is on the phone with a client, a client, a customer, so on and so forth. And it turns out that Sandy might just have to deny this client's request. Anyways, e. Commerce. First of all, the word commerce usually means business for the most part. In fact, I believe that if you went to Canada and you studied business, business administration, they would have another name for it. They'd call it commerce. I have cousins who went to university and they studied commerce. Commerce and business mean about the same thing. And then whenever you see that e stuck to the beginning of a pre-existing word, you can be pretty sure that that means. Electronics. So this is commerce, business. It's done over computers and the internet and stuff like that. Exactly. So that's who she works for. She works for an e-commerce company, and a client has called in with a request. So she is on the phone with that customer. Now here's what the client says: There's a problem with the bathing suit I ordered from you online, so I'd like a refund. Okay. Here we've got the term for an article of clothing. That you use to swim in. You're not using this to take a bath. Usually, a bath or a shower is done in the nude. But in this particular case, the person wants to wear a bathing suit. Although, if you're at a nude beach in Europe, you can probably swim naked as long as you want to. But here, it's a bathing suit for people who are a little more modest. They want to swim in a normal fashion, wearing that bathing suit. I've been kind of confused though because people have asked me, well, you know, what do men wear and what Do women wear? Are there different words for those articles of clothing that you swim in? For me, well, let's see. If I'm going to go swimming, I'm going to find my swimsuit. That's the term I use.、Mm, swimsuit, bathing suit. I've heard people say swim trunks, but、mm-hmm. that's kind of old-fashioned. And then for girls, you could say a bathing suit, maybe a bikini if that bathing suit comes in two pieces, or you can call it a one piece. Let's say if it just comes in one piece. These would all refer to articles of clothing that you wear. When swimming, anyways, apparently there's something wrong somewhere, and this person wants a refund. By the way, when you request a refund, when you say "I want a refund" or "I'd like a refund," what you're saying is that I want my money back. I bought something from you; it's defective. I don't like it, so on and so forth. So I'm going to give you this back, or give this thing back to you, I should say, and I want my money back. Okay, I'm unhappy. Now, it's harder in Taiwan than in other places to get a refund. In fact, I don't think I've ever gotten a refund. Maybe people will let you swap things out and make an exchange, but refunds are unheard of. Though in the United States, certain companies do stand by their products big time, so they will offer. Refunds. Refund. That's the noun. Refund is the verb. Although we most often use this word as a noun. I'd like a refund. I'd like a refund. The service here is terrible. I don't want to pay for my meal. And here, of course, the client would like a refund. Sandy, she says, "Thank you for bringing this to our attention. Thank you for telling us all about this problem." And here she says, "May I ask what the problem is?" She could ask more directly by saying, "What's the problem? What's wrong with the swimming suit? Why do you want a refund?" But that's kind of rude. And if you are a representative, you need to be polite. So yes, you make this question a little more polite by saying, "May I ask what the problem is? Could you tell me what the problem is?" And the client responds by saying, "I ordered a size M, medium, but when I tried it on." 
it was too tight. Okay, so at this point, I'm starting to wonder about things. So the bathing suit was too tight. That doesn't sound defective to me. There are a range of sizes, after all. Size M, if it's too tight, get a size L, a size large, or a size XL. So right now I'm thinking refund? Maybe not. This is not our fault. Maybe it's your fault. Exactly. And Sandy says, well, I understand how disappointed you must feel, but swimwear isn't refundable once it's been worn. Yeah, you might have some nasty skin disease or something like that, so we don't want you to give that back and we'll sell it to somebody else and they'll get sick and sue us. We don't want that to happen. So if you have tried this swimsuit on, we don't want it back from you. That's our policy. It isn't refundable. In other words, we can't give you a refund. Anyways, the client says, but, but I didn't wear it. I merely tried it on. So I guess this policy is a little bit stricter than I thought before there. I would think there's no way I am going to accept a refund request if someone put this on, went to the beach, and then sent it back. No way, no how. But it goes further than that. You cannot refund this stuff once it has been worn, even if you only try it on only if you try it on or merely try it on. Yeah, merely only. I just only tried it on. I did not go swimming with it. And uh, Sandy here says, well, I'm sorry, ma'am, but that's our refund policy. There's nothing I can do about it. The client doesn't sound very happy about this. The client says, so what am I supposed to do with this bathing suit? I can't return it. I can't get a refund. I've got this useless bathing suit. What am I supposed to do with it? And Sandy says, well, as much as I'd like to be of assistance, there's not much I can do. Assistance here is just a fancy way of saying help as a noun. I can't give you any help. I can't give you any assistance. I'd like to help you out, but alas, there's nothing I can do. You're not getting a refund. I'm going to officially deny your request for a refund. Anyways, folks, with that, it is time for us to take a break. But when we come back, part two of our Plus Talk dialogue will be detailing a different type of request and how to turn it down. We'll be turning down a co-worker's request. See you soon. Two, turning down a co-worker's request. Aaron, Sandy's co-worker, asks her to help with an urgent project. Sandy, there's a big favor I'd like to ask of you. Okay, shoot. What is it? The deadline for the project I'm working on is this Friday, but I'm way behind. Could you help me put together the PowerPoint presentation today? I really wish I could help, but I can barely keep my head above water myself. Would you have time to help me tomorrow? Sorry, but that won't work either. I'll be attending meetings practically the entire day. All right, thanks anyway. I'll hit up Steve. Maybe he has some time. Good luck. Co-worker,这个字是名词,意思是同事,像是 I headed out to dinner with a few co-workers after our shift was over. 我和几个同事下班后一起去吃晚餐。最后我们看到名词,deadline,指截止期限,最后期限。例如, Jordan worked hard to meet the project's deadline. Jordan努力工作已赶上那个专案的截止期限。或是, I handed in my work before the deadline. 我在期限前交出了我的作品。Okay, let's talk about the second conversation for today. It's entitled, Turning Down a Coworker's Request. So here in the title, we've got the term, turn down, which means to basically refuse to do what the other person wants you to do. You're just saying no. You're saying no to a coworker's request. You want me to work for you tomorrow? Forget it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to turn you down. There you go. Turning down a co-worker's request. A person who works with you, you can call that person a co-worker. A co-worker, a colleague, a peer. These words are all similar. But yes, if you're working side by side with someone at about the same level there. Anyways, Aaron, Sandy's co-worker, asks her to help with an urgent 
project. So here we've got Sandy. She's back again there, and she's going to have to turn someone down again. Sandy's getting good at this. Anyways, here we have the word urgent. If something is urgent, it's extremely important. There might be an emergency. So the situation is urgent. You need to respond to it immediately or deal with it immediately. And here's how Aaron begins the conversation. He says, Sandy, there's a big favor I'd like to ask of you. So a favor, of course, is something that someone does for somebody else. And you ask someone for a favor. Could you do me a favor? I need some help. Could you take out the trash? Could you do the dishes? Could you watch the kids while I go out and buy something, etc.? Would you do me a favor? So, yes, Aaron has a big favor that he'd like to ask of Sandy. Sandy, can you do me a favor? And Sandy says, okay, shoot. What is it? And Aaron says, the deadline for the project I'm working on is this Friday, but I'm way behind. Could you help me put together the PowerPoint presentation today? Wow, he's kind of asking a lot here. First of all, the deadline for his project, it's on Friday. That's when it's due. That's what that word means. Your deadline for something, or a deadline for something, I should say, is the date that it is due, okay? If you hand in an assignment and the deadline has already passed, that particular assignment is late. So he's got to turn in this work here or get this job done by Friday, but he's way behind. Now, I don't mean to be rude here, but Aaron, this sounds a whole lot like your problem, not mine. But Aaron still asks, could you help me put together the PowerPoint presentation today. So here, put together, that's something you would do to a puzzle. Let's put together this puzzle. But in this particular case, the project needs to be organized. They need to find a bunch of uh, pictures and maybe some music and write some text and stuff like that. So yes, you need to organize it, put it together. You need to finish it up so that you can give that PowerPoint presentation when you need to give it. Sandy says, well, you know, I really wish I could help, but I can barely keep my head above Above water myself. Here we've got an interesting phrase to keep your head above water, which means you're probably in turbulent waters and you're trying to get ahead. It's very difficult to swim, so you need to tread water or swim vigorously against the current in order to keep your head above water. If you can't do that, hey, you're in trouble. This is more figurative. We don't really use this so often when we're actually swimming. There you go. Yes, if you can't keep your head above water when you're swimming, you're drowning, and that's uh, terrible. Anyways, Aaron says, hmm, well, uh, would you have time to help me tomorrow? So if not today, tomorrow. Eh? And Sandy says, sorry, but that won't work either. I'll be attending meetings practically the entire day. So there you go. Sandy is straightforward in telling him this just won't work. I've got too much work. And then tomorrow that won't work either because I'll be in meetings for pretty much the entire day. So she's explaining herself and not being rude. She's not saying, Aaron, this is your problem. Get out of my face. Exactly. And she's pretty good at the art of saying no. My mother was terrible at that. People would call her all the time because they thought she was a real chump. She would say yes anytime they asked her a favor. But Sandy knows how to say no here. And Aaron says, all right, thanks anyway. I'll hit up Steve. Maybe he has some time. Sandy says, good luck. Here we've got the phrase to hit up. That just means to try to ask someone else to do someone for you or to try somebody else with your request. There you go. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to say goodbye for now. But stay tuned. The Chinese teacher is on the way. Hello,同学，大家好，我是Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。在第一部分的对话当中，某一位顾客试穿泳衣之后想退货，不过Sandy他们公司的政策是一旦穿过就不能退货了，即使他想帮这位顾客也
A S。那么字根 S I S T 表示站立。好，刚刚说自首是朝向，然后字根是站立。当我们朝向某个人，站在他旁边，随时提供协助，用这样的方式，也许可以联想到 assist 有帮助、协助的意思。顺便补充几个有相同字根的单字，第一个 consist。C O N S I S T， 它的字首 C O N 表示一起，那么 S I S T 表示摆放，把所有东西都摆放在一起来构成整体，那么 consist 它就有组成、构成的意思喽。第二个补充的是 persist，P E R S I S T， 它的字首 P E R 表示完全的 ，S I S T 表示站立。如果从头到尾都完全站在那里，完全不动如山，屹立不摇，这样应该可以联。想到 persist， 它有坚持不懈、持续存在的意思。第三个补充呢是 insist， 它的字首 i n 表示在什么之上 ，s i s t 表示站立。当你站立在某个立场上，采取这个立场而不让步，用这种方式就可以联想到 insist， 它有坚持主张的意思。好，那么第四个补充呢是 resist，r e s i s t。它的字首 R E 是指反抗 ，S I S T 是指处于某一种状态，合在一起呢就表示说处于反抗的状态嘛，所以 resist 它有抵抗、抗拒的意思。那在第二部分的对话里面 ，Aaron 想请 Sandy 来帮忙会诊投影片的简报，那么 Sandy 回答说 ，I can barely keep my head above water myself。那么 keep one's head above water 这个用语是源自于游泳的时候，我们不是应该会一直要让头浮出水面，让你的头部保持在水面上？那这时候它就引申用来表达说，不使自己陷入困境。如果你头都浮不起来，那不就惨了吗？好，那么所以当 Sandy 说我几乎没办法让头部维持在水面上，意思就是自己都自顾不暇，自己都很勉强了。好，那么 keep one's head above water 也常常。常用来形容某人虽然手头比较紧，但仍然可以勉强维生。例如 ，They are barely able to keep their heads above water。他们勉强度日，生活过得很勉强。好，那么以上是今天重点整理，我们回顾今天的单词吧。Merely, don't get upset. I was merely asking a question. Assistance, I'm going to need some assistance preparing the food for the picnic. Urgent. Tom got to work early because he had to attend an urgent meeting. Deadline: the deadline for sending in your application is next Monday. Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.